Hello and welcome to the start of the boys cross country meet as Lawrence takes on Steinert at Veterans Park in Hamilton. I'm Tom Irvin here with assistant coach Mike Womack and we'll be bringing you all of the exciting action in this cross country meet. Welcome Mike. Thanks for having me today. Uh, thanks for being here. Now we see an awful lot of runners on the screen right now. Uh, no, you're fine. You're good. Well, it's just Lawrence versus Steinert, isn't that true? That's true, right. There will be four or five uh, teams competing at any one given point, but uh, we, uh, team in the red, uh, obviously Lawrence, we're racing against just the green. That's the only team that we're scoring against. You'll see Princeton in blue and uh, West Windsor, uh, maybe, uh, sorry, the North, um, West Windsor North running here in, the, in the, the black and blue, but we're just scoring against the team in the green. Oh, okay, and we see a Steinert player, a Steinert runner coming up, a couple Steinert runners coming up on the right side of the screen, Lawrence right behind them. We're really close. Uh, you'll see the first runner was Eddie Gonzalez. He's a senior runner. He's been running for us for uh, five years or four years now, and there's Bryce Maloney, another senior, uh, just coming along the way, and uh, the rest of our team right here, JV runners, um, keeping right up ahead of the varsity Steinert runners as well. Yeah, and uh, the, the runners have just entered the woods. They did the first stretch out around the soccer fields at the park. Now they're in the woods, and well, boy, they're all, we're moving ahead already to the one mile mark. Uh, so I think that was a Steinert runner went by there, wasn't it? I think Steinert ended up finishing first uh, overall. Um, team score, uh, the first top five runners per team will score against uh, another team's top five runners. So individually, you know, a score matters for a personal record. You can see Eddie Gonzalez here, senior again, our top runner, coming around the corner at the mile mark, keeping right up with uh, the majority of the Steinert runners. And it's, it's not just about the initial speed on this event too, isn't it? It's mm. also the pacing so you can go the entire distance. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oftentimes runners come out too strong, too fast, and they wear out. Uh, this is a 3.1 mile race. It's your regular 5K. Uh, if you come out too fast, you just, you'll just blow it at the end, and, and your second wind at the end. And um, often that's where runners get past when they, when they haven't paced themselves well enough. Our runners are uh, pretty good at pacing themselves. They know where they need to be at about this mile marker. This isn't our first race here. Um, so we've had plenty of practice at Veterans Park. Um, and our boys are, are right where they need to be at the, at the one mile. Yes, I noticed by the one mile mark, they're starting to spread out a little bit, but the majority of the runners still seem to be pretty well together. We stay right with uh, the majority of the runners in our conference. We really, uh, we really keep up. All right, now the, the leaders appear to, this is, this is near the two mile mark, I believe. And there, we've got a lead pack that's really going, but they are not running against Lawrence, as we've mentioned. Princeton and, and West Windsor North are two of the strongest teams in the conference. Fortunately, they're battling each other this day. Um, they are two of the best teams in the state. Uh, well, there's, there appears to be strength in numbers because there's a lot of them out there. There, there are, yeah, they have, they have big, big teams. So we're coming here at the, this is just under two mile, um, oh, sorry, just under a mile left in this race. Uh, and our runners will be coming around the corner here in just a second. There went the first of the Steinert runners. And we're, look, we're looking and hoping that the next one we see will be a Lawrence runner. And it is. One of the great things about our colors is that we always we see the red versus these other uh, other teams. Their colors kind of blend in, but we can see our men. Uh, Eddie Gonzalez again in first place there. He's running a really great race, uh, really good time. He's, it's, he's, he's picking up speed here. Our number two runner is a sophomore. Couldn't be more proud of this young man. Uh, this is uh, Kenny Grizak. Um, he's been a strong runner all year long, setting a personal record right now at this point in the race. Now, for those of you that were tuning in hoping to see the girls run, that will be following the conclusion of the boys' meet. Here is uh, our second senior and our third runner. Uh, and then right behind him is another sophomore. Uh, that is uh, Jack Weber. Uh, he's also been running really well. This is his first year. Uh, you can see he's ahead of some of the better teams here uh, with Princeton and North in the, in the state. And he's keeping right up and actually ahead of a good number of them. You see a lot of boys in green running here. We are um, ahead of Steinert at this point, um, or at least their, their JV team. And uh, how much uh, training does your team do during the week? Well, we practice usually five to six days a week. On Saturdays, it uh, depends on, on what kind of race we have coming up, what our uh, meets look like, if it's a dual meet or if we have some other major race. Um, on any given week, we'll have two long runs and a long run for us. Our runners will head out for eight, maybe nine miles, and this is doing this after a full day of school. 
Um, here comes uh, freshman Michael O'Rourke. He's been running really well for us. We're really happy to see where he is with these upperclassmen. Yeah, it'll be great to see where he's at in three more years. He's just developing. It's it's amazing. By his senior year, he should be one of the first in these meets. Uh, so we have two long runs a week, and then we'll um, we'll do some speed workouts on the track, um, checking for timing, trying to trying to get their times down, and and picking up the pace a little bit. And it's, we can see right up there where the runners are coming into view, there's actually a, a fork in the trail. How do the runners know which direction they need to go at those points? Well, for a first-time runner, this can be uh, somewhat tricky. This can be a precarious situation. More than uh, once a meet, you'll see somebody, unless there's, you see that young man standing down there now, you'll see somebody make the wrong turn. Uh, unfortunately, in cross-country, if you make a wrong turn and you don't correct yourself, uh, despite how well you're running or your times, like this young man, just turn the wrong way. Uh, you will, uh, your time won't count. So runners have to correct themselves. They have to go back the right direction and make sure they get back on the course. That often slows down times, and it's frustrating for young runners especially. But that's the way it is. Who do we have coming? This is now? sophomore Patrick Marsh, uh, another runner returning from last year, uh, running really well. Um, is a great leader on our team in general. Now we're going back out to the field as the runners are starting to head down towards the uh, finish line. We're here with just under uh, half a mile left in the race. So they've run two and a half miles at this point. Um, you can see the front pack, which is uh, leading um, Plainsboro, uh, sorry, uh, Princeton and West Windsor North um, leading, leading this race. Now, you may have noticed that uh, camera angle there as the runners are heading off to the left. They're actually going over a, a portion of the course that they ran in the very beginning of the event. Some of the courses will loop back. They'll double back on places where we've already been. Um, logistics of, of, of cross-country courses, it just happens. Um, you see a soccer ball rolling by here. There's a soccer team playing today as well. Well, fortunately, they don't seem to be interfering. No, it's our cross-country runners can run through just about anything. If there's rain in the forecast, we'll keep running. Here's Eddie. Gonzalez again, senior, um, finishing strong. And now we're going to have to go over to the finish line because the runners are getting there already. You'll see these guys sprint here. They're, they're trying to shave seconds off their time. And for somebody who is, has been running with another race, uh, another uh, runner the entire race, this is where they try to catch them here in the, in the final stride. There is you know, four or five seconds left at this point, and so runners give their heart at this point. They, they pour out whatever they have left in the tank. Uh, they want to finish strong for a, for a good win. Now, unlike uh, some of our earlier camera shots, at this point we can see the runners are quite spread out. They are very spread out at this point. At the, the 3.1, which is where the end of our race is, at 3.1 you really can see uh, a difference between the, the runners on any given team. Um, how in, often, if they go out too fast at the beginning of the race versus uh, p good pacing along the way, you'll see people really breathing hard and, and, and struggling if they've gone out too strong. These runners are coming right around this corner into the chute. Right, here's somebody really putting on a push. When you see right. something like that, does that mean they saved too much? It means he should have been running harder. Absolutely. He, he didn't spend enough out on the course. If he picked up his pace by you know, 10 seconds, 20 seconds per mile, uh, this would probably be a better place where he is. Shouldn't have that much left in the tank at this point. Well, he sure had a lot left on that run. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's something that our young younger runners have to learn to develop. That they, the the, the learning when to give uh, more energy or less. If you're going up a hill, pushing through versus getting exhausted on those places, and kind of uh, opening up your gate and, and really sprinting downhill. Now, just to remind our viewers, we are only watching for the green runners, as we see a Steinert runner coming up to the finish line right there, and the red runners being our home team of Lawrence. The remaining teams, the different color uniforms that we see running, are in a separate meet, just running at the same time on the same course. Well, and occasionally in, in severe conditions, if the, the here's another runner who just has too much energy left, <laughs> uh, you can see him sprinting. It's great that he's you know, sprinting here at the end, and we want to see our runners doing that too, but um, <clears throat> just too much left. Here is senior Eddie Gonzalez finishing strong for us. He's uh, finished strong all year long in his races. He's, he's looking good and, and uh, he's been a good asset to the team. Now, do any of these uh, runners on the Lawrence team participate in other sports during the year? 
Most of these runners will also compete in winter and spring track, um, often in much shorter distances. Um, some of our runners, uh, one of our one of our sophomores, he's new this year, um, uh, Victor Gonzalez, is um, actually on the wrestling team, and he's here because he wants to be a part of the team, but also to kind of cross train, prepare for the winter. Here's That's our an sophomore. Bit of a mix it, there. It is, yes. Uh, S sophomore Kenny Grizak finishing. Uh, he's been our number two runner the entire year. And again, sophomore Jack Weber, who's been a big surprise. This is his first year running, and he's finishing third in this race. That's quite a run. I, we expect uh, those two runners, those two sophomores, to lead the pack next year and uh, take over the leadership of the team. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting point. Uh, I'm sure this is true with all the teams, but uh, when you have your strongest runners being your seniors, every year turns into a rebuilding year it's, as you lose your best runners. Right. We've, we, we have gained a number of runners on last year's team. Uh, here's Bryce Maloney, senior, finishing at Veterans Park. One more race to go for him as senior year at this park. Uh, and then here's another freshman. Uh, this is... Um, Gary Lull and our second freshman, uh, Michael O'Rourke, both having really great runs, really great seasons. We've got a large uh, contingent uh, population of freshmen and sophomores this year. Uh, we've built on our team from last year and um, we're, we're building up a program here. So uh, soon we'll have the numbers uh, like a Princeton or a West Windsor. Well, that'll be great to see. The uh, fellows you have right now seem to be putting in a great effort. They are, and you'll see here some more green runners. Uh, this is Steinert finishing up here behind us. Yeah, a couple more Steiner runners, once again behind we're, Lawrence. We're running really well today. We have we're having a good we're having a good meet. See, uh, quite a crowd coming out to support the event as well. It's difficult with cross country for supporters to come. We're happy to see anybody uh, from any teams come out. The course is just so spread out, and it's not on school grounds. It's usually in a park. So here we see also sophomore uh, Victor Gutierrez, who he is a, a wrestler who's been a great runner for us. We might have to try to convince him to run winter track. Oh, that would be interesting. <laughs> I've noticed that uh, because of the way the course is spread out so much, you see some of the uh, spectators actually running along the course trying to get to different points where they can cheer on their runners. After that first mile that we were at just a little bit ago, um, for the top runners, if you were trying to watch somebody who's probably going to finish first or second in this race, um, the second place where we see them is at the mile mark, and you got to really sprint to get to that place before the boys do. Yeah, they're moving a pretty good clip there at the start. They are. We're watching the Princeton boys coming in here, uh, and our senior, uh, new to the team, um, is a sprinter in track, Kyle Dougal. Yeah, it looks like we got another runner coming in. Is that Kyle? This is, no, this is Patrick Marsh. He's our sophomore, uh, returning from last year as well. He's so. developing really well. He shaved five minutes off his time from the beginning, from his first race at this course. Five minutes is significant. That's quite in an a, improvement. In a, it's in a race that, that takes only 25 minutes at, at tops. That's and he was showing pretty good form as he went by our camera he as well. Has excellent form. He's, he's, he's really coming around. Really proud of him. And we're just finishing up with some of the uh, later runners in the event. We'll be going here in just a couple of moments to the start of the girls' meet, where once again Lawrence will be taking on Steinert. So red here, versus green. That's right. Here we are again. We can see the girls. Uh, they're running toward us. We are just. Um, well, later on we'll we'll be back at that final where they come out of the woods. We'll we'll see them here again. But again, we're watching uh, for just the green versus the red. Just Lawrence versus Steinert. These. Other teams in blue are competing against each other. Now, over the years, I've done a few meets at this park. That tree that they're running past right now, is there any instruction given them which side they're supposed to go on? Well, in often points, uh, in often parts, they, there are instructions. For this tree, they're on the right side. Um, there are places where they're supposed to go to the left or the right. Uh, the officials aren't at every position on the course, and so we it's the honor code that we expect uh, runners to, to follow uh, and abide by the, the honor code here. Um, and for the most part, um, they're pretty honest when the, when their runs. And as you were saying, as we we're finishing up the boys meet, they uh, really make some time heading into the woods. As you can see, the girls are, the last of the girls right now are disappearing off into the woods and we should be picking them up any moment here. Yeah, yeah. There they are. And we've got one of the Steinert runners out front. 
Uh, so Lawrence is going to have to go after her at some point. Our top, uh, well, this is actually the first year in, in a few years that we've been able to field a team. Um, last year we only had three runners, uh, which you have to have five to have an official team. We can see two of our girls coming around the corner now, both new to the team. Uh, sophomore Emily Castro, and just behind her, senior Jill Madsen. Jill has been our top runner all year long. Uh, we're expecting great things from both of these girls as we come up to conferences. <coughs> yes, and we see a couple more of the Lawrence runners coming up. Who do so we have here? This is Dana Aikida. She is a junior, also new to the team, also performing outstandingly well. This is the only sport she's competed in in three years, and she's doing great. And here's our senior captain, uh, Sarah, and a new, another new runner um, right behind her, and Gianna Murphy. Now we're out at the one mile mark already. As we see uh, three runners breaking away from the rest of the field. Right, you'll, you'll notice a lot of, of uh, Princeton uh, and West Windsor are both teams ranked in the top 20 in the state. Um, so they are strong runners from you know, top to bottom. Now, I noticed that group of Princeton girls that just went by all running in a pack together. Mm -hmm. Do they have to have uh, some of their runners slow down to wait for the rest of the pack? Uh, ideally, no. The top runner is pushing their, their runners. Um, they are trained to pace each other and to pace themselves. Um, if one wanted to break away, and we'll see probably when we get to, uh, further down the line, uh, mile three, that they will start breaking away. But by and large, uh, a lot of coaches will encourage their runners if they are running about the same speed to stay together. Here is our, our senior, Jill Madsen, coming around with miles. She's uh, right now running at a personal, personal best time. She's running really well. Oh, that's excellent. Hey, had a lovely day for this as well. Uh, I've been over at some of these events where I had to have an umbrella over the camera, or uh, we've had cold winter winds blowing through. It's oh, it can be brutal. We run, we run rain or shine or snow. There's sophomore Emily Castro, again, new to the team this year. Right, if it, if it rains at our next meet, we'll still be running. Um, it has to be lightning or thundering to stop us. We runners, we, we it's a it's a tough sport. You gotta be you gotta have heart to do this. Here is Junior, again new to the team, Dana Aikida. She will be uh, a leader on next year's team, um, leading the pack. You mentioned the running in the rain. How does that affect the runners? Times will be slower. You can see this is grass or, or dirt that we're running on, which means slippery conditions. Um, unless a runner is wearing spikes or cleats, uh, something out here. Uh, here's our, our senior, Sarah Balimowitz, uh, who's our captain and a phenomenal leader. Um, she's got incredible heart, incredible leadership. The times would be slower if this is, if this is a wet course. They're going to be um, having a hard time getting traction. Here's Gianna Murphy, another newcomer to our team. She's a sophomore. Um, Running really well, really proud of her. She wasn't a runner before this year, and she's turning out to be a great teammate. Now we move near the two-mile mark, as we see the uh, Princeton squad leading the way. They are tough competition. They're, they're a tough team to race against. They, um, we mentioned earlier, running in a pack. They, they tend to stick together for most of the race. There's quite a bit of diversity in the uh, the terrain they're running through as well. They started out on that big open wide field, then by the uh, one mile marker they were just in an opening running through some woods and now it seems to be a fairly narrow trail where running side by side can be difficult. This is one of my favorite things about cross country versus winter or spring track. Our, our courses are, first the weather is beautiful usually in autumn uh, and we get to have a really great uh, weather outside, we do get to change up the, the courses that we are. We're running through the woods through most of this race. As a spectator here, we can't go back there and see them necessarily, but the course is just phenomenal. There are uphills and downhills and tree roots and ponds and lakes and birds and animals running around. I mean, it, it really is a unique sport in this respect and, in my opinion, the best sport uh, to compete in as a student athlete. And here's senior Jill Matson again. She's, she's on pace for a personal record here in this course. Excellent. Yes, you mentioned the animals last year when we shot the event over at uh, Veterans Park. We actually had a, a groundhog running across the uh, course right before the runners came through. 
groundhog naturally disappeared when you <laughs> saw the uh, runners coming. But then right. as they disappeared into the woods, the groundhog came back out to continue his right. business. Well, sometimes you'll see even on the school. I mean, this is an open park. This is Veterans Park. It's not a closed park. So there are, um, here's sophomore Emily Castro running really well, running up. They were about to go up to a, a hill, the last hill in the race. Um, you'll see uh, oh, walkers with their animals or on bikes or their own runners and start heading down this path the opposite direction. The girls are coming before the girls or boys come through. We have to warn them, <laughs> you're going to get trampled. There are about 50 runners heading your way. How often does that cause a problem for the runners? Uh, the spectators or other visitors to the park are really pretty respectful. Um, they usually just step out of the way or they'll wait until a group comes by. A sophomore Dana Aikida again. And now we go back to the main field as they emerge from the woods. And we've got uh, Princeton runner all out by herself by now. She's leading the pack right. And here's a, it looks like a Steinert runner yeah, uh, right behind the competition. her. She's actually performing stronger than, than I think normal for her. I'm sure that's a personal record for that young lady as well. Okay, what uniform is that one? I can't tell. That looks a little different than uh, yeah, North's I uniforms. I did not I recognize didn't, I didn't, that one. I didn't get a name on it. Maybe it was an older uniform from one of the teams. It might be. So you'll see Princeton now, their pack is starting to spread out and as they are uh, under half a mile to go here. They start to take on their own pace and their own times and um, hopefully they're pushing each other. You'll see North is staying in a pack still, uh, more or less their top runners are, are still together. Now when we were watching the boys finish, you talked about uh, the, the runners putting on a sprint to the finish. Where do you advise your runners to start making that final push? In the as they go around the corner, just down that way here, uh, they get to a paved uh, walk, about 300 meters or so. Uh, we like to see them pick up the pace there, uh, and each 100 meters down, um, start picking up a little bit further, a little bit further. There's only so much you can, you know, how, so many people you can catch, or so much time you can pick up if you wait too long. So usually uh, around 300 meters or so, we want them to really start you know, emptying everything they have left. Okay, so by this point, they wouldn't be putting on their final push, but it's coming soon. Just about. Soon. They're gearing up. They know when they come out of this wood right here, they know that they've got to start uh, sprinting here. And here's again our, our senior Jill Madsen. You'll see she's going to pass these girls. Mm -hmm. She finishes really strong for us all the time. She doesn't seem to ever get tired as she runs. I yeah. guess having that green rabbit in front of her didn't hurt either. No, it didn't. She kept pace with her all the time. Looks like she's going to finish ahead of her. So, so far we've got just one Lawrence runner and one Steinert runner coming through. Um, this is going to be a close race. All right, we've got our second runner. So right now we are beating Steinert. This is sophomore Emily Castro again. She's battling. Oh, here's our third runner, Dana Aikida. Right now we are leading Steinert in standings. And Sarah Senior, Sen Sarah, sorry, Senior, Sarah Volimowitz, our captain, right, coming come on, in fourth. Lean forward, slide uphill. Now we're going to have to cut away from this camera momentarily to go catch the finish of this event. But we've got one last one. And there's our number five, Gianna Murphy. Looking strong. You can see she's got her ankle uh, wrapped here. Um, Gianna's been battling some shin splints. That's natural for runners. Um, just try to minimize the injuries. Take days off if we need. And here comes the fastest runner of the event, it appears. Yes, this is Princeton coming in. Strong, here's this Steinert runner. Looking a little a little tired. Understandably. Yes. These 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 kids, they put in full days of school. Um, it's full six hours and studying and testing exams, and then they choose to come out and uh, run just run for sometimes very little uh, audience or crowd. It's uh, a sport where you really have to have strong determination and, and willpower to run when you aren't being cheered on out in the middle of the woods. Not to mention when they're done, they have to go home and do their homework. They go. It's the day's not done for them. Yeah, it's, it's easy to um, chalk it up to three-mile race and that's it, but um, their day is not done. This is the middle of it. Right, and that goes on not just on the race days, but also with all the Absolutely. preparation you were describing. Absolutely. When, on days when they run eight or nine miles, um, almost a you know, full half marathon approaching that, uh, they still have to go home and study. Um, a lot of heart and a lot of dedication that goes into cross country. 
Now this meet was originally scheduled to happen on a different day and it was rescheduled. Do you know the reasoning behind that? We were supposed to, right, we, this is Wednesday here. We, yesterday we should have competed in uh, Washington's Crossing and all the teams should have, but the meets that were scheduled in Washington's Crossing on Tuesdays, um, for some reason we're not completely certain why perhaps permissions weren't actually uh, granted, um, they, they moved us. And so we are now running on Wednesdays here. Um, with one more race to go next week. Well, with a course on a beautiful day like this, oh, that's can't complain. not a problem. No, can't complain. This is this is great. We had a little trouble out here last week. Uh, a couple of our runners, um, it's easy to get uh, out of the moment and, and be with another runner. Uh, there were two other runners from two other teams who went the wrong direction, and two of our girls were competing with them, and back in the woods where there were all these changes and turns, they gone the wrong direction and, and didn't finish where they should have when we would have probably won that meet. Speaking of finishing where they should have, we've got our first Lawrence runner approaching the finish lines. Jill, she is, all, I mean, this her first year on the cross-country team, and she is tenacious. You can see that these, she's now 10 seconds ahead of the girls that she passed uh, just a, a moments ago. Yeah, no one uh, near her. Nobody near her. She is a phenomenal pickup for our team. She is just absolutely outstanding. Here's the backside of the Princeton runners. Looks like one of the North Star runners trying to catch her. I don't know if that their, happened. Their top late. runner isn't running today. Uh, no, she's not. They, sometimes we coaches will choose to set out. We've this is a just a couple of days after we had a Saturday meet in Holmdale, New Jersey at Shore Coaches, which is this historic race. And that course is um, brutal it's a very it's where states are held we take our runners there earlier in the year to get some experience um, it's a it's a hard course to run and how did they do that we did well we we suffered a couple of injuries we had a couple of runners who, who couldn't finish um, there's this um, historic item called the bowl you'll see Emily Castro making oh, a move here I passing these runners there. she's going yep. for it I think, I think she's gonna yep. catch them yep she got excellent. it excellent she got That's, it at the finish line this is what we like to see in our runners is everything you've got left pouring it out here we had a good race at home Dale um, as a team we didn't do as well as we would have liked because we had some injuries, but um, some personal records, some some fastest time set. So we're happy to see that. Running is oftentimes just a, it is a competition against these other teams, but it's also just a competition with yourself, shaving off seconds of your own time. Right. You've been mentioning personal best. Here's Dana Ikeda. This is a personal best for her as well. She by almost 30 seconds, she's running faster than she has in the past. You can see she's opening up that gate and trying to shave off a few more seconds. And that's all we're going to be able to bring you today. Thank you for tuning in to watch the cross-country meet from Veterans Park as Lawrence took on Steinert. Uh, thanks to Mike Womack for sitting in with us today in the studio. Thanks for having us. And we look forward to seeing you all again next time on the Cardinal Sports Network. <laughs>